When Pal World was first revealed in 2021, it immediately caught my eye as an absurdist parody of Pokemon that I thought was hilarious, but assumed would be a terrible game to actually play. However, fast forward, and after a few days of actually playing it, I can unironically say that it's more than just a parody. I've actually been having a lot of fun with the game. Adding base management to Pokemon turns out to be a really cool idea with a lot of potential, but there is just one problem with the game, and it's that after looking at some of these pals, I can't help but feel that I've seen this somewhere before. And I'm not alone. A lot of people have been claiming that Pal World is just openly copying and plagiarizing Pokemon, while others are claiming that it's just parody and inspiration. But which is actually true? Someone needs to get to the bottom of this. And so I decided it would be me. I would put myself in the middle of this, make everyone on both sides angry at me, and rank every Pal and Pal World on a tier list, from original idea all the way up to something that Pocket Pair Inc actually could be sued over, which when I started this was just a joke, but uh, might actually end up being closer to reality than I thought originally. Up first, Lamball, a little sheep pal that rolls around. Right off the bat, it's very similar to Wulu, who has the same gimmick, both being based on sheep with overgrown coats, but the actual design here is very distinct. So I'm gonna put this as being the same idea, but not actually plagiarism. Next we have Catvia. This is just a pretty generic little cat. There's obviously cat Pokemon, but there's also cats in real life, and uh, Pokemon's not the first franchise to make them into cartoons. So even if I think this particular design is a little bland, we can't really call it a ripoff. Chickapea is, uh, just a chicken. There is uh, barely a design here at all, frankly. They just made a generic cartoon chicken and uh, stuck it in the game. This honestly might be the laziest design in the entire game but it's not ripping anything off. Lithmunk, it's a grass chipmunk. Another generic, but ultimately uncontroversial design. Fox Sparks is a fire fox, another elemental animal. Nothing really controversial about this one. But then we have Fwack. Uh, this one's just an angry little platypus. Maybe it looks a little bit like Ducklet, but that's just what platypuses look like. So uh, nothing really controversial to say about this one. I don't really get the pun in this name though. Is it Fuck Quack? That can't be right, is it? Like no problems with this design here, but Someone please explain what the pun is supposed to be. Next up, we have Spark It. Here we go. This is one that actually is treading in on some Pokemon territory. From the front, it doesn't look like anything too terrible, right? But look at this tail. That's Raichu. This is just Raichu with enough changes made to it so you couldn't prove that it's supposed to be Raichu in a court of law. Maybe a bit of a mix with some Electro Buzz as far as the first stripes go, but this is pretty much the exact same process you'd see in someone making their OC Sonic the Hedgehog character. So we're putting this in a legally distinct T. This one's name is Tansy. This one's definitely aping haha <laughs> on pansage they uh definitely took pansage here changed the ears a bit and then changed the plants on its head to uh something a bit more fun but you're not fooling me couldn't even change the number of leaves on the tail you, you didn't put a lot of work into making this one unique this is uh definitely another one going into oc territory ruby is just another generic elemental animal but i don't really know what animal it's supposed to be i couldn't even tell if those are hooves or feet and i'd say this is a deer but it has that big tail and ears like a fox so it's i have no idea what's going on on with this but on the plus side uh if i have no idea what's going on with this that means i'm not seeing any pokemon in this one either so it's almost certainly its own thing pangullet uh this is a penguin not a very unique idea but well, nothing to worry about. They're allowed to make penguins. And we have Pain King, the King Pirate Penguin, or maybe an 18th century admiral. Might be the most unique one yet, honestly. I kind of like it. Putting this down in original. Now, I've heard a lot of people talking about Joltog. People are claiming that this one's just a ripoff of Shaman. And I mean, on the surface, sure, I can kind of see it, but they're both just hedgehogs. That's just what hedgehogs look like. Shaman just takes the hedge part a little bit more literally. Any design based off a hedgehog is just going to look like this. And not to spoil things, but there's much more more uh, blatant inspirations if there's something you want to get angry about here. But this one, I'm just going to have to give them the benefit of the doubt, though. It's just a hedgehog with colored quills. Same idea, worst. And you know, at first, I didn't see anything wrong with gum moss. It's just a little drop of tree sap wearing a little acorn hat. But uh, looking at that face, I can definitely see some goomy inspiration on this one. That being said, sentient slimes aren't a super unique idea in video games in general. And uh, unlike some of the other pals in this game, this one actually has a fun little twist on it. So I'm going to have to say that this one's at least fairly original. Vixie, this one's just a cute little fox. You know, like Eevee, a lot like Eevee. This is just Eevee with a fox head. I mean, 
Changing the whole face is a fair amount of work, I guess, but man, they are treading real close to just stealing the original design here. Good thing they didn't just do that, huh? Kukrites. This is fine for the most part, just an owl with a hat on. Uh, maybe a little haunch girl like but the hat's totally different, and it's a different bird. And you can't tell from the design, but it's got a philosophy theme going on. You know, like Socrates, or at least it's spelled like Socrates. But the pal deck entry has a Rene Descartes quote in it, so maybe it's pronounced Hukart, even though it's not spelled that way. Uh, I might be putting more thought into this than the guy who made this, honestly. Anyway, this one's a pretty unique, if not poorly executed idea. Dude, and this next one coming up, this one's called T-Fant. It's a little teacup elephant and I love him. Look how cute he is. T-Fant is my personal favorite, pal. Now, this isn't the first time I've seen a little teacup elephant in a video game, but it's a very old pun and I don't think I've seen it in a monster catching game before. So I'm gonna put this one down as unique. This is Depresso, a depressed, uh, thing. It uh, kind of looks like Ndidi mixed with an Esper, changed up the hair a bit. It's just so generic. It's hard to really say if it's just a mashup between these two Pokemon or just some guy. So I'm just gonna put this one under the suspiciously familiar tier just to be sure. Okay, now remember how I said Vixie was Eevee if they just changed the head a bit? Well, Kremis is Eevee. That's it, Kremis is Eevee. This is just straight up Eevee. Particularly Gigantamax Eevee with the extra poofy fur. I can't actually believe they put this into the game. So I'm going to be putting this one in potential lawsuit here. Now, I do think it's ever so slightly different enough where you couldn't sue over this pal itself. However, it's important to remember, little instances of borderline plagiarism can add up. And the more of them you have in a game, uh, the more likely it is you actually get served with a lawsuit and that a court actually finds against you. And uh, believe it or not, this is in no way, shape or form the worst First one they've put in here. Next up though, we have Daydream. This one's not an obvious ripoff of anything, but it does have some similar ears and the exact same face as Weavile. Not to the point where I'd call it a copy, but the fact that they both have that single snaggle tooth like that is kind of suspicious. In the larger design scheme, there's pretty much nothing matching the two, so I'll have to call it fairly unique. Now Rushor though, when I caught this one, between the time I caught it and actually looked at it in the pal deck, I had completely forgotten what it would look like, and just looking at the icon, I thought this was going to be a Zigzagoon ripoff. Like you can see, it's got the collar and the fur that's exactly the same as Zigzagoon. But when you look at the full body, it's uh, it's actually pretty clear that it's just a generic boar with a little bit of a mane on it. Not a particularly amazing design, but it's a unique animal. At least unique to anything in Pokemon, that is. Uh, but then we have Nox. This one is a... Uh, also just Eevee. Now, it's not Krimis level of Eevee. It's definitely in legally distinct tier. But those ears, that's it. Uh, this could definitely be a ghost evolution of Eevee. Fuddler, on the other hand, though, this one's just a mole. I could see a little bit of buzel on the face, but uh, I think that any small mammal is just going to look similar if you give it orange or brown fur like that. So uh, nothing really raising any red flags here. Kilimari, though, this one's giving me strong Inke vibes. So much so that when I first saw in the game, I thought for sure that it was going to be a ripoff. Uh, now that I look at it up close, though, it, it, it's legally distinct. I can definitely see the inspiration. This one's named Mao, and this is what I like to see when taking ideas from Pokemon. It's got the same idea as Meowth, you know, money cat. But rather than just gluing a coin to its head, it took the same basic idea and put a new twist on it. Now that twist is that they just took a more realistic cat and put a bunch of gold jewelry on it, so a bit boring in practice. But taking the ideas that a Pokemon represents and twisting it into a new thing is actually actually a pretty good practice that feels like it builds on the ideas from Pokemon rather than just ripping them off. I'd love to see more pals do this in the future. Just maybe not in such a generic boring way. This one I'll put in the same idea tier. Now Celery on the other hand, that's just Mantine. It's a manta ray that flies in the air. The exact same idea, just slightly tweaked enough to be legally distinct. I want less of these. This one is neither fun nor unique. Now at first glance, Dire Howl looks like Lycanroc. And I've heard other people say this as well, and that's because it does. It looks like Lycanroc. But there's been a particularly hot debate around this one. Because people are just claiming that the developers beyond PAL world stole Lycanroc's model and used it for this PAL. However, when you put the two models side by side, it's pretty clear that they're just entirely different. The most you could really claim here is that just Dire Hell is based on Lycanroc. I think they're both just 
pretty generic wolves overall. And since Dire Hell doesn't have any rocks or stones in its fur like Lycanroc does, I'm going to have to put it in the same idea tier. It's not really enough to be suspicious when they're both just based on the same animal. Like, of course they're gonna look similar in that case. Toka Toka, on the other hand, is a much more interesting comparison. Because this one doesn't look like they started with an animal and made a pal from it. It looks like they took Zatu and just turned him into a different bird. Like, they both have these same wacky designs and the exact same color scheme on them. Toka Toka doesn't even have the same psychic lore to explain the patterns like Zatu. Definitely some OC stuff at play here. Then we have Foppy. Uh, this is just some generic grass sprite thing. A bit bland of a design, but it doesn't appear to be a ripoff of anything as far as I could find. So we're just gonna have to give this one the clear. Although, I do feel like I've seen that hair somewhere. Ah, oh, no, no, this is just Tinkaton without the murderous intent everyone loves. I mean, it's, it's legally distinct for sure. Definitely not the exact same, but yeah, no, that's, a uh, that's OC Tinkaton. This is Mazarina. Uh, this is not a Pokemon. Uh, this is just a cow, but it is clearly a ripoff of the Moo Moo Meadows cow. <laughs> Nintendo's coming for their ass over this one. Uh, Bristol is not a ripoff of another thing, though. Uh, because it's a ripoff of two things. This looks like a Lilligant and a Gossifleur blended together. Now, I'm pretty sure that smashing enough plant parts together does make this legally distinct, but man, they really just stuck a bunch of parts together and called it a day. I can see the seams where they stitched this shit together. Gobfin, though? Gobfin's fine. It's just a goofy little shark goblin. I don't see anything wrong with this one. Maybe the colors are a little similar to Sharpedo, but uh, it's a shark. It's just kind of the colors you'd expect from it. The whole design is radically different from any Pokemon I've seen, though. So I'm not going to pretend that this is any kind of a ripoff. This one's good. I like this one. Kingyu is another fun one. He's just a little ball with two long arms. He gives me a bit of Chimeco energy, but I think that's just ultimately because their bodies are cute little balls. And if we're going to start calling having a circle for a body plagiarism... I am in trouble. So uh, I'm, I'm fine with this one. He's just a little guy. He could never do anything wrong. Mossander. This is a panda covered in moss. There are multiple panda Pokemon and this looks like none of them. So good on that pal world. Not a fan of this pal, honestly, but I don't think I've seen anything like it before. Now, Wooly Pop though. Yeah, no, I've seen this before. This is Alchemy. It's even got the sweets in the hair and the double ponytails in the exact same way. Like, animals made out of candy isn't a unique idea to Pokemon, so it's plausible this is just an example of convergent thinking, but I highly doubt it. I'm putting this in suspicious. Caprity, uh, Caprity's even less creative. This is just a go-goat that's been packing on a few extra pounds. Like, there's some changes here and there. He looks a bit happier, so that's nice, but clearly just a legally distinct go-goat knockoff gonna have to put this one in OC tier. Alpaca though. This one's good. I like this one. It's just a pink alpaca. Um, the pun here though, I, I don't, I don't get, don't get what melpaca is supposed to mean, but whatever. I've seen some people say that it looks like Flaffy, which I, I guess I can see. They are both pink, but, um, that, that might actually just be a coincidence. Definitely distinct enough to be its own thing either way though. Ike third year, however, is, uh, not exactly a distinct idea. You can tell from its name what it's actually based on. Ikefire, a mythical Norse stag. The exact same mythical Norse stag that Xerneas is based on. Ikethadir is a bit more of a direct depiction of a stag though, with less of the magical life powers. So it's definitely another case of them taking an existing idea and making their own monster from it, rather than copying Xerneas directly. I do wish they did more with it than just deer, but it's not plagiarism. Unlike Nightwing, however, uh, this is a star raptor with the hair turned up and they made it a vulture and instead of whatever kind of bird this is, like a big sparrow? What is Star Raptor? Not a vulture. That's what makes Nightwing legally distinct enough for Game Freak not to sue here. Just like Rib Bunny. Rib Bunny is Rabbit Sylveon. There's no other explanation for the ribbon tentacles. It's just, what if Eevee was a bunny? I've never seen anything other than Sylveon have these ribbon tentacles. I'm gonna be honest, it's a pretty unique trait. At least Rib Bunny isn't as lazy as Incineram though. Just look at this. This is Zorark, but with maybe a little Houndoom mixed in. Just look at those arms though. They're the exact same ovals with the three fingers and the tufts of fur near the elbows. It's not even subtle. This is actually just a Zoroark OC. This one though is named Cinnamoth. Its scales taste like cinnamon apparently because it's brown I guess. I, I don't know. The idea is not super well reflected in the design. Uh, other than being a moth, doesn't really resemble any Pokemon I've ever seen though. So at least there's no plagiarism here. Arsox is pretty unique too. It's a it's a fire goat. I mean there's, there's elemental goats in Pokemon but like are we really gonna knock Pal World just for a goat in it. I think a fire goat's a pretty neat idea. Pretty new element for a goat. Can't say I've ever seen this one before, except, um, except the devil. He's a fire goat, isn't he? 
Never mind, this one isn't a unique idea, but it's not a ripoff of anything as far as I know, so we can put in unique. Uh, this one's Dumb Mud. Dumb Mud is, uh, again, just mashing two Pokemon together, but way less subtly than some of the other ones. Uh, it is a Claude Sire, but with Sobble's Fin. It's not even that it just resembles Sobble's Fin either. It's just Sobble's Fin, straight up. If there was a lawsuit with the Pokemon Company, this pal would definitely be making an appearance. Gotta put this in the lawsuit tier. Now, Cognito, though. This is actually one of the best pals in the game. It's just a little Plague Doctor bird. It's not the most unique idea in the grand scheme of things. Using a Plague Doctor in your design is a pretty common motif, but it's really well executed here and not already being done by Pokemon, so I gotta give them some props here. This is a nice, fresh-ish uh, idea. Love to see more of these. Um, Les Punk, though, doesn't quite meet the same bar of freshness. I do like him. He's a little rapping lizard, but it's uh, it's clearly inspired by both Scrafty and Toxicity. They didn't rip off the designs here directly, but they do sort of have the same inner city music theming going on. And if it wasn't for some of the other pals that were coming up, I'd give it the benefit of the doubt. But as it stands, I'm going to put it in suspicious tier. I think it's uh, I think the design in isolation is pretty OK, though. Uh, You know, what's not OK, though, is uh, is Loop Moon. Loop Moon is, uh, just Zoroark. They ripped off Zoroark twice. This one isn't a fox, though, so you gotta give them that. They, uh, swapped the head out. I don't know what animal that's supposed to be, but hey. Again, creatively bankrupt, but legally distinct. What more can you ask for? Uh, Gale Clock seems fine, though. He's just a bird. I, uh, I think he's supposed to be a bald eagle, but it doesn't have the same Native American motif that Bravery does. It's just a straight-up eagle. It's, uh, it's kind of the same level of design as Ekans. It's hard to, uh, make a ripoff when you're just drawing an animal in an anime art style. Well, it might be hard to call this original. It's certainly not a ripoff of anything. Ah, oh, this one, though. This one's absolutely a ripoff. Robin Quill is somehow a blatant ripoff of both Gallade and Decidueye, but they didn't even get rid of the Archer aspect of this one. So it just feels like they ripped off Decidueye even harder. Like usually when you're blending two Pokemon together, it ends up feeling too different from either one to feel like a direct ripoff. But they just put so many aspects of Decidueye on this Gallade body, it feels like they just want to plagiarize Decidueye. Now there's enough differences in color choices and feather patterns here where you have to say it's an OC tier. I don't think it copies any anything closely enough to be used as evidence in a court of law, but just barely. Now Goryorat? Goryorat is a monkey? That's it. it. It's not. It's nothing too special. Doesn't really look like any other monkey that I've seen in Pokemon either as far as I can tell. So uh, we're good here. This is Bee Guard. It's a bee. Nothing, nothing particularly special here honestly. It doesn't look like any bee Pokemon I've ever seen. It's more of a just a woman, but hey, I'm just judging if these are unique, not if they are good. So here we go. And Elizabeth, Elizabeth is the queen bee. I, th I think it's supposed to be like Elizabeth, like Queen Elizabeth. That's the pun. It's a, uh, it's a bit of a stretch and requires historical knowledge of previous British monarchs to work. So uh, bad name on my book, but uh, design's fine though. Just a larger bee guard. Grintail at first glance is just a fat cat, but that face, I've seen that face before because it's ripped right off of a Galarian mouth. It's not even that it's similar. Just look at those teeth. It's the same face with the same number of line strokes and everything. This was at best copied and at worst literally ripped out of a Pokemon game and just pasted onto this model. Like this is the kind of thing that you could actually use as evidence in court here. One-to-one -one recreations of assets from other games is explicitly illegal. You can't do that. You might be able to argue that copying such a simple design is okay because there's only so many ways to draw a mouth. And uh, you know what? They, you might have a point there. That would have to be handled on a case-by-case -case basis by a judge, not me. Uh, Sweet though seems fine. It's just a big clump of hair with some cat ears. It uh, kind of looks like a spupa, but that's a very superficial and loose similarity, both just being big white fluffy boys. A similar design concept, but I can't really say that one's based on the other here. And then we have Sweepa, which is just Swee with a mustache. Same tier. Gillette is a nice one though. He's just a big furry boy. You can ride around on him too. I love this guy. The closest Pokemon I've seen is Furret, but they're both just, you know, ferrets. Maybe not even that. I'm not sure what animal this actually is, but you know, Pokemon doesn't have a monopoly on ferrets, so this one's unique enough not to draw any criticism from me. Univolt's doesn't feel as original. Uh, I wouldn't say it's copying any Pokemon, but it is an electric zebra. 
just like Zeb Stryka. It's a radically different design, but I'm not really aware of any electric zebra trope. So the fact that Pal World has an electric zebra makes me feel like they're taking the idea directly from Pokemon on this one. Radically different design though. So we can't knock this one any harder than just stealing the idea. Then we have Foxicle. Uh, this one's a fox. Uh, it doesn't really resemble any particular Pokemon, just like Univol, but there's obviously the Ice Fox, Alola Ninetales. The thing with Ice Foxes though is the white foxes are just a real life animal. So Unlike an electric zebra, it's really hard to call this idea unique to Pokemon. Uh, they're both just kind of looking at a real life animal and assigning the most obvious element to it. Uh, Pirin though is uh, a little less unique. It's a, it's a fire horse, just like Rapidash. The design's a little different, but if the fur wasn't black, it would it would be almost exactly the same. They really did just change the fur color and then add some extra fire decals onto the side. The fire decals do make it go faster though, so cool design. Honestly, it is just a touch too far away from Rapidash to call it a Rapidash OC, so I'm just gonna split the difference and put it in suspicious tier. Raindrix is an ice deer whose fur is a Christmas sweater, so that's cool, very cozy. This does feel more like a dog wearing antlers than an actual deer when I look closely at it, but uh, as far as I know, this one's entirely original. Now Rayhound though, Rayhound feels like it wants to be Bulltown. The naming scheme and the idea behind these monsters are identical but executed entirely differently. But unlike Norse Deer or Money Cat, I've never heard of a common trope or myth that both of these monsters are drawing from. I think Rayhound is just directly ripping off Bulltowns. But since there's no visual similarities other than, uh, dog. I'm just gonna put this under suspicious. Kitsune. Kitsune is based off the idea of a kitsune, I'm assuming. It's a... Uh... It's a Firefox thing. Looks more like a wolf, but uh, whatever. It, it doesn't appear to be ripping off anything directly as far as I can tell. It does look like a furry OC though. Dazzy though. Uh, Dazzy's a little bit less original, but you know, also in a way you can't sue over. It's clearly inspired by the Force of Nature Pokemon, but all of these Pokemon have the same origin being based on Japanese nature gods. The mythical being on a cloud trope is far older than Pokemon. And even if you just play Nintendo games, you've probably seen it before. So you can't really get upset about Pal using it too. And now, we've been looking at a lot of similarities between pals and Pokemon. What if we had a pal based on an Overwatch hero? Now, I have no evidence of this whatsoever, and some people might call this a stretch, but Lunaris and Echo from Overwatch have the same color scheme, same general silhouette, and even have the same blue fingertips going on. I'm not crazy. There's gotta be some commonality between these two. Maybe they're both pulling from a third thing I'm not familiar with, but the similarity is striking. I obviously can't put this any higher than suspicious, because this is all just personal suspicion, but I'm feeling it. There's something here. What's a little easier to argue over, however, is Dinosaur. Uh, this is Gudra. It's just grass Gudra. It has the same tail, the same ears, the same curvy body. They just took a Gudra, painted it green, and copy-pasted Lilligan's flower onto its head. Like, I feel this one just did not get enough work to make it unique. We are straddling the line between OC and something the Pokemon company could actually sue over here. But given there's a few pals that actually present legal troubles, I'm gonna have to put this in OC C tier, but just barely. Serpent though, he's fine. Just a generic sea serpent sort of a monster. It's fairly unique, not copying anything as far as I can tell. Bit of an underbaked design in my opinion, could use a bit more pizzazz. Merith on the other hand, has too much pizzazz. I don't like it. It's just all the fire, the death mask. It's supposed to be a sort of death angel sort of a thing, but it's on four legs for some reason. Uh, I've never, I've never really seen anything like this before. So, uh, unique. We can definitely call it unique. Dig Toys doesn't really feel like it's ripping off anything in particular either. But man, when I see that spiky shell, I can't help but feel like I'm looking at Bowser. Now, spiky shells are definitely not unique to Mario, even if it's the only place where I really see them regularly. So I'm just gonna put this in similar idea tier, but I wouldn't be surprised to find out that it took some inspiration. Up next is Tombat the Magic Cat. He superficially reminds me of Glizgore, but it's, it's different. Completely different animal. This one's a magician instead of a vampire bat thing and they both they both just kind of fly that's uh that's pretty much where the similarity ends I'm gonna have to put this one under originals this is the big one number 69 lavender which is exactly what it looks like they took a salazzle and leaned into the i want to have sex with this pokemon motif the pal deck description even says as much there was a lot of people saying that this one might be made from stolen assets but when you actually pull up the models for this pal and the original pokemon side by side they're they're clearly two different models like the skull 
skulls are slightly differently shaped. If you look at the trunks of the bodies, the PAL is one polygon wider. Like, there's no way you can claim these are the same models. This definitely wouldn't get them into any legal trouble. So I'm going to be putting this in OC do not sue tier. But honestly, uh, out of everything in this tier so far, I think this one might be my favorite because it's just an actual parody of the Pokemon. Uh, it might not be the most original joke, but hey, it's it's uh, it's more than a legally distinct Pokemon. It's more than you can say for most of the things in this tier. Flambella, on the other hand, is a little lava girl with some goopy hair and a little flame on the top of her head. I'm pretty sure they just started with a Litwick and turned it into a new idea entirely, but I do like where they went with it. It's evolved enough to the point where I'm not actually sure if it's based on Litwick or if it just happens to look kind of similar. So I'm going to put this in suspicious tier. I think for a game that's trying to satirize Pokemon, this is a pretty good place to have Pels be. Just taking the idea behind a Pokemon and just tweaking it into its own unique thing. I think if this is the closest you ever got to copying anything in Pokemon, there'd be a lot less controversy around this game. Vanworm, uh, he's fine. Just a dark vulture, not really ringing any alarm bells with this one. Original enough. Then we have Bushi. Since everyone who watches my videos is fluent in Japanese, I'm sure there's no need to explain that Bushi is just a Japanese word for warrior. Uh, Bushi is based on a samurai, just like his Sui and Decidui. I thought this was going to be a slam dunk case of copying Pokemon when I first saw it, but after taking a closer look, they clearly went with a much more literal samurai appearance than Decidui, with actual clothes and even a sword. Given, however, that they just copied Decidui wholesale for another design, though, I'm pretty sure they just copied Hisui and Decidui and worked backwards from there. But given how much work that was put into making this one distinct, I can't really say it's anything more than a suspicion. Beacon is more or less in the same camp, but even further removed from the Pokemon of the same idea. It's an electric bird like Zapdos. I think the Black Mask is sort of similar to the Galarian trio of birds, but looking closely at it, it's not really an exact match with any of them, so they're definitely not stealing any assets here as far as I can tell. And uh, given how unafraid Pal World is of just copying things from Pokemon sometimes, it might actually just be a coincidence this bird has a mask. So I'll just I'll just put this down as an idea of convergent thinking. Uh, Ragnahawk, exact same thing. Very similar to both Galarian, Moltres, and Talonflame, but nothing that directly indicates they're just copying Pokemon. Pokemon here. Just similar theming. Ketris the Cat Witch. Is, uh, there's plenty of witch and cat inspired monsters in media, but I'm not aware of anything that resembles this too closely, so I'll put this down as original. At least original enough. Catrice's rival of Wixen, though? Yeah, no, this is just a recolored Delphox with a hat on. Like, there's enough little differences here, along with the fact that, uh, Fire Witch isn't the most unique idea in the first place, so that'll definitely keep Pal World from getting sued over this one. But this one radiates OC do not steal energy here. Verdash? Uh, probably the same level of creativity here, honestly. This is just a grass score bunny. This is also going in OC do not suit. Valet is a flower fairy. Not a, not a super unique idea. Widespread trope. And as far as I can tell, the design is entirely original. So I'll put it down in original tier. Sibilix, though. That's, uh, that, uh... That just looks like they mashed together a Hatchet and a Frost Moth. Definitely legally distinct territory here. I don't think you could actually sue over this, but I can see where they stitched these two Pokemon together. Definitely can't call this original in any way, shape, or form. Elphadrine, though, is just a dinosaur with wings. Uh, also not, like, an original idea. Pretty boring, but legally, uh, entirely distinct. They're in the clear here, along with Kelpsy, who is... Also fine legally, but um, uh, since I've seen the discourse, I'm gonna bring it up here. Uh, a lot of people have been accusing this game of using AI to generate pals. However, most of these designs have been around for at least four years, before the modern wave of AI generation tools existed. And on top of that, I've found no actual evidence that AI was used in any portion of this game, so as it stands, I'm going to have to say for now that I think that the AI allegations are false. However, looking at this thing, if there's any pal that was generated with AI. Oh my god, it's this one. It is just a fish blob with no mouth and some fins haphazardly glued on. It is so generic, uncanny, and underdeveloped as a concept, I am kinda surprised a human thought this was okay. Probably my least favorite pal. Azrobe definitely isn't AI though. It's just a lawsuit waiting to happen. Uh, this is, far and away, the worst one in the game. And I'm sure looking at it, you can see the problems. They just took Superior's body and slapped Primarina's hair on it. But, uh, that, that's not just me saying that. People have actually looked at the models and compared them. Primarina and Azrobe have 
almost identical hair, which is wild given how unique that hairstyle is. I can see some small differences in shape, and there's a couple places where the triangles aren't exactly the same in these models, but it's obvious where they pull the design from. I'm not a legal expert, but in the world of riding at least, getting this close for a copy is plagiarism. You can't... <laughs> You can't do that without going to court. This could legitimately be a lawsuit we're looking at here. Cryolinks is fine though. Not like aesthetically. I hate it. But it's not ripping anything off. So we're we're good. Blaze Hell is like a devil lion thing. Not a not a super unique idea, but it doesn't seem to be ripping off anything as far as the design goes. Don't think we'll be seeing this one in a courtroom anytime soon. Relaxosaurus is in the same boat as far as I'm concerned. It's just a big silly dinosaur. Just a goofy guy. I love him. Nothing to hate on here. Now Bronc Cherry though. Yeah, I've seen this one before. This uh this is a souped up meganium. It really redid the whole design from the ground up here, so definitely nothing that wouldn't be covered under parody law. Certainly nothing they would get sued over like some of the other pals we've looked at. But uh, we, we all know what this is really supposed to be. We're slapping this in OC tier. Patelia is similar, a girl in a grass dress. Now there's plenty of Pokemon that look like this, but uh, you can't really nail this down to anyone in particular. Uh, so just for that, we're gonna have to bump this down to just using the same idea. Reptyro though, uh, this one, this one's fine. Just a big fireball. Kind of similar to Heatran, but entirely unique design. Has to go an original. Now King Paka. I like this one. I think he's a really nice design. Uh, there's a lot of people who have issue with the Trident, and I see it. It does look just like Empoleon's Trident, but Pokemon did not invent the idea of Tridents being a sign of nobility. Uh, pretty sure we have to give that one to Poseidon, and uh, Poseidon's been around a lot longer than Pokemon, so I'll put it down in the same idea category. But honestly, I really love this one. Mimarest is another good one. It's running the same idea as Torterra, being an animal so large that it's essentially its own living ecosystem, but that's a trope as old as the human race. So we'll, we'll just put this down as the same idea. Then we have Wumpo. Wumpo reminds me of a lot of things. He's got some Snover and My Neighbor Totoro energy, but he's pretty distinct from both of them, honestly. He also has that Tangela thing where his face is in the shadows, but that's not really something we can pin down as being unique to Tangela. Shadows just kind of exist in real life. This one seems to be pretty unique overall, but I just can't shake that feeling that I've seen this guy somewhere before. If there's something I missed here, be sure to let me know. Up next, we have Warsect. At first glance, it uh, looks like Mega Heracross, but when you actually compare the two designs, it becomes obvious that this one's akin to more of an actual real-life beetle than Heracross is. But honestly, you can't ding it for anything more than that. So it might ultimately be inspired by Heracross, but at the end of the day, they're both just interpretations of the same thing. A beetle. These next couple, though, are gonna be, uh, a little harder to explain away. Uh, this is Fenglope. Can you see where they got the inspiration for this one? I do think it's just so slightly different enough where they can't get literally sued for it, but, uh, it's, uh, it's clear what's going on with this one. I'm gonna put it in OC. Just like with Felbat, this is Darkrai. Straight up Darkrai. They barely tried with this one. Just gave it some shoes and a horn and called it a day. Same thing with Fellope. This is, this isn't an asset flip. They clearly came up with their own design of the, the same thing but they are trending a dangerous line here. Uh, Quivern? Quivern is fine though. It's just a big angelic dragon. I do get Neopet vibes from this, but I couldn't find any Neopets that this was actually stealing from, so I'll put this down in original tier. Now Blaze Mute is another one I'm gonna put down in original tier. I don't think it's ripping anything off, but Bracadios from Monster Hunter has the exact same rock pillar arm thing going on in its design. Everything else is super different, of course, so I can't really accuse this design of being a copy of that one. But it definitely feels inspired here. There might be some common DNA or a third thing they're both based on that I'm just not aware of. El Zephyr also seems fine. Its moon-shaped wings immediately triggered some red flags for me for some reason when I saw it, but the closest Pokemon I could find is just Lunala, and it's, it's pretty different over overall. So I'll just mark this one down as being unique for now. Now Astagon, he's been catching some flack online for looking a little bit too much like Mega Aggron. And yeah, it's pretty similar. The front of this helmet's definitely got the same general design, and the whole armor motif is the same as well. But the armor does have a different plating pattern entirely, so it's definitely not an asset rip. But given how close the design is overall, I'm gonna stick this in suspicious tier. Uh, another pal that took some, uh, 
inspiration. Menesting. This, this is Garatina. This is Garatina if it was a scorpion instead of a centipede. Now, while the inspiration on that mask is pretty clear, it's it's not a copy. It does look different. So I'm just going to have to stick this in OC Do Not Steal tier. Honestly, I think this one is just absolutely hilarious. I, I do kind of like this one. What I'm not a fan of, though, is Anubis. Anubis is creatively bankrupt. You can't pretend this pal isn't a stolen idea. A lot of people have been saying it's just like Lucario. Uh, that's, that's not what I think they're stealing from. I think it's, you know, just Anubis the dog man god any bipedal dog is just gonna look like that now the good thing about anubis is it is a 5,000 year old character so it's i'm pretty sure it's in public domain at this point so i guess we'll just put it in same idea if we count humanoid dog as same idea now dormitide has some obvious inspiration behind it on the surface it does look pretty similar to gyarados but it's important to remember that the idea of a giant sea serpent is as old as seafaring itself and there's a lot of variations of it out there i feel like this design leans more in the direction of being a sea serpent monster that you would hear tales about from sailors rather than the sort of mystical Asian water dragon trope that Gyarados is clearly based on. So I'm going to have to put this in the camp of same idea. While I could see this as being directly inspired by Gyarados, it's not a very unique idea at its core and they've changed it up enough here to the point where it's edging into a different theme entirely. Suzaku though, I have no idea what the idea behind this thing is. I've um, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before in my life. And I couldn't find anyone online talking about this guy no matter how hard I searched. Maybe there's some niche design that I missed out there, but uh, this one seems entirely unique from anything I've seen. You know who's not entirely unique though? My neighbor Electrobuzz. Yeah, this this is not unique at all. Grizzbolt is 100% if Totoro and Electrobuzz had a child. It's uh, it's legally distinct for sure. It's definitely getting into OC tier, but uh, there is not an original thought behind this man. Not that I hate it, mind you. I love this. This is hilarious and I want to see more things like it, but I have to call it what it is. It's just a two for one ripoff. Lilene is um another inspired design. It looks to just be another girl in a grass dress, perhaps a mix between Lilligant and Mega Gardevoir. Like I can see the inspirations, but it's just slightly too different of a design to really pin it down on anything in particular, you know? And here's Glarus. Glarus is another bird. Uh, it's got some royal Egyptian theming, I, I think. Not, not really sure exactly what that's supposed to be, but I haven't been able to find any similarities between this and anything else. So we'll put it uh, in original enough. Now here's Berserk on the surface. Pretty unique, but pull up a Grom Chomp and look at these two. That hunched over posture, that pointed nose that hooks over into a little bit of an overbite. I mean, other than those two things, this one's pretty unique, but uh, I'm a sussed out by that head design. I'm putting this in suspicious tier. There's no way you get that exact same snout without a little bit of inspiration, you know? Speaking of suspicious heads, we have Shadow Beak, a quadrupedal bird thing whose crest looks suspiciously familiar to Savali. There's a few differences to it. Maybe they're both just using the same bird of prey mode Motif, but I'm gonna also have to put this one in suspicious tier. Then up next is Paldius. It's just a paladin centaur. It's not really a unique idea, is it? Just slapping a D&D class onto a mythical animal and calling it a day. But it doesn't rip off any other design as far as I can tell. So I feel pretty safe throwing it down in the original tier. And Paldius' counterpart, Nicomus, exact same design idea, but evil. Uh, st still, still going in the original tier right next to Paldius though. You're allowed to rip off your own designs, that's fine. Next up is Frost Stallion. It's a Frost Pegasus. Not a, not a unique idea at all, but the closest thing to it that I've ever seen is like, what, that, that queen pony thing? Uh, queen, Princess Celestia? Is there a different My Little Pony Princess? I've never seen a single episode and I, I really don't plan to. Regardless, I don't think this is copying anything in particular, so we can just stick it down in original with the last few. Uh, that, however, is going to be the last time we're putting something in the original tier, because up next we have Jet Dragon, who is an unholy blend of Salamence and Latios with the holographic diamonds from a Paradox Pokemon. There are multiple Jet Pokemon, and this is somehow worse than all of them. My one rule, if you're gonna rip something off, is either make it cooler than the existing thing, or make it funny like Grizzbolt. This is just disappointing. I don't like it at all. OC tier, definitely. It's not close enough to any particular Pokemon to be plagiarism. I just wish they took the opportunity to do something better, you know? And with that, we're done with every pal in the pal deck. However, there's one honorable mention I have 
have a 112th pal that isn't even in the game. Now this one has been shown in trailers, so I don't know why it's not in the game. But what I like to imagine is that even the developers behind Pal World thought they were flying too close to the sun with this one and pulled it out. I don't really know how you fly closer to the sun than what appears to be a slightly modified model ripped directly from a Pokemon game, but whatever. This is Boltmane. It is Luxray. This is the same creature with a little diamond added to it. Uh, this one is even lazier than the ones where they just smashed two Pokemon together because they, they just took one Pokemon here. It's just a direct ripoff. Now, if you look at the models side by side, they're not exactly the same, so definitely no asset theft here. In fact, you can see a number of small differences across the entire Pokemon, so on the whole, it's it's legally distinct for sure. And that's every pal in pal world ranked by how much of a ripoff I think they are. Now, I don't actually have a problem with making parody Pokemon. I actually think it's pretty funny, but I am disappointed to see that there are some pals crossing the line into possibly being asset rips or direct plagiarism here. And while plagiarism is nearly impossible to prove in court, and an actual lawsuit is unlikely, I think it's still pretty clear what they're doing on a few of these pals. There's no there's no other way of explaining that here, which is pretty sad, honestly, because Pal World is a really fun game in its own right, and I really enjoyed playing it, so I do hope that they update a few of the more agreed pals to have a bit more of a unique design here just to put the whole plagiarism issue to rest. But am I being too harsh? Not harsh enough? Let me know in the comments what you think. Now then, there's a video I've been editing for two months that I put on hold for this, so I gotta hop back to that now. Alright, bye bye.